I understand this discussion is a little unpleasant for you, but it is my duty to prepare you psychologically for all possible outcomes. Now, have you thought of what animal you'd like to be if you end up alone? Yes, a lobster. Why a lobster? Because lobsters live for over 100 years and stay fertile all their lives. I also like the sea. I must congratulate you. The first thing most people think of is a dog, which is why the world is full of dogs. Very few people choose an unusual animal, which is why they are endangered. A lobster is an excellent choice. That was Colin Farrell in the amazing black satirical comedy The Lobster, which is definitely the strangest film that I have seen this year at the BFI London Film Festival, and arguably one of the best, although I will freely admit that this is the Marmite of movies. You're either going to connect with it on some very weird level, or really hate it. And it was interesting to note that in the screening that I attended, it was a very mixed response at the after party. Some people loved it, some people were just perplexed, some people had actually walked out and headed to the party first. So a very mixed bunch of responses. This is another film from the fascinating Greek director, Yorgos Lanthimos. And if you've seen his previous works, Dogtooth, Alps, he is creating worlds that are very odd, that have high concept social organisation, where he's trying to satirise either social or political mores. And The Lobster is his first English language feature. And it's got a great cast, a great setting and a great concept. So the idea of this movie is to satirise the modern obsession with relationships and the way in which society pressures you to couple up. And that if you're a loner, if you're a singleton, people think there's something wrong with you. Like, why don't you feel the need to be in a couple and stigmatise you and exclude you implicitly from certain types of events? So in this world, if you are single, if you're not in a couple with a certificate living in the city, then you have to go to this hotel and you have a certain amount of days to find a partner. And if you don't find a partner, then at the end of that time, they presume that life is so unbearable for you being alone that they're going to turn you into an animal of your choosing. And Colin Farrell, who plays the protagonist of this film, evidently decides to be turned into a lobster, and his elder brother before him turned into a dog. It's quite a savage culture, we realise. One of the characters who's staying at the hotel, played by the wonderful Ben Whishaw, is recently widowed, and I mean six days widowed, and he's already under pressure to find a new wife. And the other thing that's quite weird about the society is that I think is savagely satirical on reality is the superficial way in which people find a match. So, oh, we're both short-sighted. Oh, we both get nosebleeds. We must be a match. And there's a very funny section in this film when Colin Farrell tries to form a match with a woman who's been in this hotel for quite some time because you can, in fact, lengthen your stay by hunting loners. It's utterly savage. And she's absolutely heartless. And he tries to give the impression he's heartless too with horrifying results, which uh, I'll leave you to discover for yourself. So the whole thing up until pretty much the first half of this film plays as a savage, savage satire on the pressure put forward by couples, the smugness, to singletons. But then, at that point, Colin Farrell escapes into the woods and meets a renegade band of loners. And as it turns out, the militant loners are just as bad as the militant couples, which I think is rather funny. And when there, he meets Rachel Weiss's character, and they fall in love, and some of the blackest comedy is derived from their courtship. And I think if you've seen the trailer of for this film you'll see a little bit of how that plays out and then we get a very interesting investigation of what it means to be in love and how far should one go for the person that you love i find the commentary on the way in which we now date the way in which we find partners how society pressures us to do so how the people who aren't doing so feel about that is absolutely spot on and savage and a much needed commentary The humour is very particular. The actors play their roles in a sort of deadpan manner. So it's almost like self-consciously bad acting. And it's because 
what I think Yorgos Lanthimos is trying to say is that in this world, we're all acting. We're all creating personae. So your Facebook profile, how you are in public, how you mingle at a dinner party. This is all acting and badly because we're not professional actors. And because of that, I think it can maybe seem slow paced or stale somehow to certain types of audience. And so I can see how some people would find it very hard to connect with it. It's also worth saying that as funny as I think this movie is, there are moments that are absolutely savage and could almost class as a horror film. And I think that could also be hard to stomach as well. So... You know, I think Yorgos Lanthimos makes the kind of movies that we should have at film festivals, not glossy, straightforward romantic dramas like Brooklyn, which I also saw just before this and will review later. You know, those are ordinary, undemanding, glossy, you know, friendly little films that the world has always pumped out and will continue to pump out. They don't need the publicity and the the tinder, <laughs> to use a phrase, of a film festival to get them to catch a light in audiences' imaginations. But The Lobster is daring, it's provocative, the manner in which it's filmed is very unusual, very deliberate and staged and utterly controlled. Yorgos Lanthimos knows exactly what he wants and he puts it on screen. And I think that's the fun part of art house cinema. It's getting to play in someone else's imagination and someone who's really looking at something very everyday, very relatable, that we can all get our hooks into, but in a way that's utterly new and provocative. So I can definitely see where this film, when it played Cannes, became the buzzed movie. And it's definitely, I think, one of the hot buzz movies of the London Film Festival. I would strongly encourage you to try and see it. And maybe not at the cinema, maybe wait till it comes out on DVD, because I suspect the release will be limited. Because it is a really provocative film. And the performances in the cast are great. Colin Farrell's put on weight for this movie. He looks schlubby. He looks nervous and and sort of unsuspecting, playing against type. You've got Ben Whishaw, who is normally this wonderfully sensitive actor playing this really hard-nosed bully almost. Rachel Weisz is fantastic in actually quite a small role towards the end of the film, in fairness, despite the posters. But you've got people like John C. Riley, Olivia Colman is absolutely hilarious. So it's very much worth checking out. But if you see The Lobster and agree or disagree with my take, please feel free to leave a comment on the blog at beena007.com. Otherwise, thank you for listening. The Lobster has a runtime of 118 minutes. It has played many festivals this year, including Cannes, Melbourne, Toronto and London. The movie will be released in Italy, the United Kingdom and Ireland on October 16th, Australia, Greece and the Netherlands on October 22nd, Belgium, France, South Korea and Turkey on October 29th, Thailand on November 19th, December the 4th for Spain, and as and when it gets a United States release date, I will update that on the full written review at beena007.com. It's worth pointing out that this film's also won a number of awards at the Cannes Film Festival. It won the Jury Prize, the Palm Dog, and it also won bizarrely the Queer Palm. And the special mention has the following citation. It doesn't include a gay narrative, but with the dearth of overtly gay films at the festival, this film stood out as an allegory, poking fun at the absurd societal rules and regulations around mating. And I couldn't have put it better myself. Thank you for listening.